Well, praise the Lord, everybody. God is so good. And we are here. Once again, we're praying our internet is uh, going to act right. Sometimes I get notifications that um, we get a bad signal. Um, but prayerfully, we're going to be good. And um, today is going to be a little bit of a departure from what Myra and I normally do. Because normally is this, I do my little intro and then Myra prays and then she goes right into a particular lesson that we have. And then after she does her thing, then I come behind her and do my thing. And then I give her the opportunity to, uh, you know, give some uh, final comments and stuff. And then we say goodbye and we're out. But today, we don't have a Bible scripture. We don't have anything like that because she and I want to really just talk about missions today. And I'm, you know, I've got my uh, other uh, phone here that uh, I'm ready to take any questions or comments. As we go along, hey, Francisco. Uh, hola, hola Francisco, como esta bien? You know, um, we um, wanted to do this because number one, uh, coming Tuesday, just this coming Tuesday, we're back on a plane, aren't we, baby? Yep. We're back on the plane, and we're going to be headed to our beloved Guatemala. That is our uh, well, for us, is really our home, and where we are sitting at now here in Baltimore is like the second home, the way we look at it. Um, but then um, I'm going to uh, get an opportunity to branch out a little bit in the month of July and August, and we'll be headed to both Kenya and Rwanda, and all of these things are mission-related. And so I thought it was apropos that we would take this particular Sunday to talk about missions, to talk about what does it really mean to be a missionary, um, share some of our own personal accounts of what we, you know, have experienced on the mission field, and really leave it up to you guys as well to um, ask any questions or make any comments so that um, we can have a nice, nice conversation on this, uh, well, in Baltimore anyway, this overcast and cloudy Sunday afternoon. So, sweetheart, if you don't mind, I will ask you to pray us in, and then we'll just see how the Holy Spirit leads us. Okay. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the blessing of your son, Jesus. Thank you for another day, Father, that you have given us in such a marvelous way, because everything you touch and everything you create is marvelous. So we bless you, Father. We thank you. We worship you. We adore you. In the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, amen. 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 So I'm going to just, just to uh, break the ice and get things started. So Myra, we'll put you on the spot. <laughs> okay. Myra, what do you think about uh, when you uh, talk about being a missionary and being on the mission field well we make up the word mission field because everywhere is missions it's everywhere it's snake stores around the corner and it could be 10,000 miles away but um serving the lord i think is that's the first thing that came to my mind because um to be a missionary you have to be sold out for the Lord. And that should be any calling that we have in our lives because we all call to missions. So to be sold out and to be willing to go anywhere, that means, as I said, to go to our neighbor, to go around the corner, to go across the street, or to go 10,000 miles away. It's, it's serving him. And being an ambassador, which means we're just basically publicizing the good news 
we're, we're you know we're not uh, the chief we're not in charge we're representing the head ship through Jesus Christ and his word and the spirit and the father as a missionary so it it, it, it encompasses near not too far away and far away it's everywhere it's, it's that's part of uh, revelations at the beginning we it's part of life and dedication to Christ amen amen you know um, I definitely agree with you darling um, uh, so many times uh, guys we end up going to missions conferences hey there's Gloria hey Gloria um, we go to uh, mission conferences and there's such a focus on the international thing and um, you know both Myra and I have caught the international bug so to speak and especially Myra okay because I'm going to start throwing out some bragging rights about my baby <laughs> uh, at this this uh, year we're very close to her anniversary but we'll be talking with her 29 years as really a full-time missionary. Uh, she has been, uh, you know, based in Chiquimula, Guatemala. I came in, scooped her up, and started mm -hmm. taking her to some of the places that I go to. So uh, at this point, we're never there the whole year anymore. Uh, we are basically there, I guess, with the equivalent of six months. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, you know, then when we add on the other places that we get to travel, then, um, you know, uh, that becomes an experience where maybe sometimes here in the U.S., we may only be here maybe four and a half months a year. Mm -hmm. So that has become a very exciting lifestyle for us as far as the travel. But like she said, um, missions is just everywhere. It's anyone, anytime, any place. And I, I always find it amazing that um, when we read in uh, Matthew to go ye therefore and teach all nations. I want to focus on that word nations. I, I, trust me, I'm not giving a Bible lesson today. But it is important to understand this one thing about the nations. The nations was never really talking about geographical locations. The nations as it is defined in scripture is really talking about ethnic groups. So it's just about being able to go to all people wherever they're located. So if you're going across the street and you are trying to um, witness and to have fellowship with those who may be outside of the body of Christ, that is missions. And you don't have to necessarily pack up a bag and go. Uh, sometimes it, it might be just uh, having a potluck and just, you know, bringing a dish and everybody get together and start talking about Christ. And you'd be surprised, like right where we're sitting now, true story. We just had a young lady that just, just left us, and in this very spot here, which I we had to clean off real quick because we transitioned from having company to uh, coming and doing this, but this table, this is actually our dining room where we're sitting at right now, but this table over the years has brought so many people together to just sit and talk scripture talk about issues all kinds of things have happened at this table breaking of bread all for the sake of identifying with Christ and even if the people that have sat here have walked away still without a commitment to Christ Myra and I have done our part to make sure that the tone is set in our home 
that Christ may be glorified. Do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, because um, Mac was generous to, to leave me with this uh, visitor we had. She's someone I had met at a at a wedding shower, and God just impressed her on my heart. And I pursued her and called her and invited her over. And I, she was here from, what, 11, 12, 30? Yeah. And she just left about after 4, 15. And we were talking about the Lord the whole time. And it wasn't, you know, I didn't have my Bible in front of us. But we were talking about the things that matter to us and it's him and how we we know him and how we recognize him, how we hear him and how he assures us in in our lives. And she, I was impressed with some of the things I said. She said, that's right, you know, because I heard something else. So it encouraged me too because sometimes uh, I look at the news and some of the things that I see, not news so much, but Christian broadcasting, some things I hear and some things I see discourage me about what is truly being spoken of in the house of worship. But I know she's in a good house, and the word is definitely uh, focused on on God and 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 how to walk that out in our lives. But I was impressed that um, she she was seeing she was seeing a level of Christ that she hadn't seen before. And she's still investigating. She's still looking. And that's encouraging because we should never stop because we're never at a level that, oh, I'm there. There should always be a seeking of more and more. So it was a good time to, to really spend and, and just talk about the Lord. In, in a casual kind of way, it wasn't no one was teaching. We were just basically going back and forth about how wonderful he is and how to hear from him not with a one point two point three point but talking about our heart and how our heart needs to be circumcised and and how we react because of our heart and the things that we need to allow god to work with us on and that was so funny because you know we were talking about um mm. forgiveness and and uh, depression and, you know, the idea I'm saved and nothing is ever going to bother me. But no, we're still, we're still growing and learning Him. Because it's not about us, it's about Him. The more we learn about Him, the things that affect us and the way we respond to things changes. And that takes time because our natural man is very strong and loves to be in charge. No matter if being in charge means is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in charge. So th that, that was the kind of conversation we were having. So it yeah. was wonderful. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, we, uh, even when our, our guest was here, um, you know, we had an opportunity to just share our hearts about just, just living a Christian life mm -hmm. and you know, of course, it always gets into, you know, going to church and mm -hmm. what church you might belong to. And, you know, yours truly um, always has to say, well, um, we don't go to church. And, I, and, and be, listen to what I'm saying. We don't go to church because we can't go to church because if we are pieces of the church then whenever we connect with other pieces of the church that would be the true body of believers we believe that we were already in church we, we are the church actually we are the church and so when uh, our guest was here earlier hey, as far as i'm concerned we have church mm -hmm. and after a while i kind of left them because i just had a feeling that <laughs> there were some things that they needed to talk to on their own and I was truly the third wheel that didn't need to be there. So I let them, and I think it was actually a good decision <laughs> to, to do so. Um, but nevertheless, you know, in our vernacular, we don't go to church. Hey, I see Jonathan Shipley is watching. God bless you, Jonathan. Please, if you have any questions or comments, we're talking missions, and we're just getting started. But... Um, you know, um, 
we we just understand that in scripture the body of believers are referred to as lively stones and Jesus being the chief corner and in architecture the 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 corner the the stone that 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 holds up the corner is the one that is most critical because it keeps the whole foundation intact and I'm not an architect but I know that much and whenever we come together in him, then we fortify the body of Christ, the, the, the church as we know it. And being sons and daughters of this holy experience, we then, everywhere we go, it is like having a walking service, you know, we, 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 we talk about, you know, we don't comply to the atmospheres of places that we walk into. We go into places and, and through Christ, we are the atmosphere. We become the atmosphere in him. And, um, we, we love it that way. And, and God has blessed us that way for us both in our own different styles to be able to connect with people, minister to people, and whether they get saved or not, that, that is not necessarily for us to know. We, we just believe that if we do our part, which is to just share the word, being honest and being transparent, then uh, God will work on the individuals. Uh, we don't go around like when you sometimes hear people that say that they're missionaries and they say that they've saved X amount of people. <laughs> well, uh, we don't do that because we don't know. Just because somebody comes to your altar, just because somebody even makes a verbal profession, only God knows mm -hmm. when that heart has been transformed. And so um, we just choose to just make sure that we <laughs> are representing well as ambassadors of Christ. And in doing so, uh, both Myra and I, over the years, and if you saw my little blurb on Facebook, combined uh, just ministry experience on the field. Um, Gosh, it is well over 49 years combined that, that that's sitting right before you now. And so, look at that. Is that Pinky? Pinky, thank goodness. I tell you, you never know who's watching. Pinky and I go way back uh, to uh, New Home Baptist Church in Landover, Maryland. So, um, you know, when we talk about missions and we talk about being on the mission field, we've already said that that could be anywhere, anytime, any place. Um, but what I want both of us to do is to just get into the nitty gritty and let's talk about what we actually do on the mission field. And as always, I'm going to give Myra the first opportunity to just share because we both work a lot. This is our lives. So I'm going to, I'm going to already, I'm going to love her and hug her real quick and let her know this can't be like a, a 20 to 25 minute uh, dialogue, but to just give you an overhead of like what we do on a daily basis, how we roll. Look at that. Dayon Cadness hey, in the Dayon. house. All right. Hey, look, I went to see your mama. Yesterday. We missed you. <laughs> yeah, but we know what you were doing because we know that, uh, well, let's just say, I won't throw out family names, but let's say we know that somebody was celebrating graduation and stuff. So we get that. So, um, you know, but I'm going to let Myra take the floor and just in your own way, uh, can you talk in your own way, baby, share, you know, what it's like to be you. Missions. Okay. Shall I? Stick with what what's going on now. Let's, Don't go too far back. Let's, let's do now. Just uh, now. okay, because he knows how I can go on. <laughs> well, and I will say this much. Initially, I worked eight and a half years at a children's home for abandoned and abused children, 
and that was tough. That was that was really tough. But God gave me another ministry with um, women and their families um, uh, in 2004, and from that, I, I was looking to see what was the need of beyond salvation and letting them know that they were important to Christ. Because that's the first thing. Um, because when you work with the poor, it's not about giving them things. They want to be seen. They want to be known. And to, to know that Christ loves them and has sent, they, they used to marvel. Here's someone from a country far away who has left her family and to them left a very comfortable life. <laughs> hmm. And is living, not necessarily the level they are, but living without some of the creature comforts that I would have had in the United States. And was willing to not only talk to them, but come to their homes and, and sit with them in their humble abode. That really blessed them beyond anything because it made them feel that they had some value. So knowing that the, they are valued is more important than giving them things because it's, it's, it's about relationship. And that way they know that, you know, I can tell them, which I have, that it's not about me, it's God that sent me to let them know about him and his love and his heart for them, even in the midst of their poverty, that, you know, things may not change as far as physical things as the home and the the structure they live in and there's some things that have changed because God has blessed the ministry but the most important thing was their heart was going to change and that they would have a new heart and a new um, relationship that helped them in, in their times of trouble because I was dealing with initially women who um, if they had a man was usually a drunk or was abusive. Not all of them, but the majority of them. So there was areas of, of real anger and um, bitterness within their hearts. But bless the Lord, in time, after hearing about the Lord and hearing his word and accepting him as their savior, they, they learned how to pray for their husbands. And it, it made a big difference in their lives. And some of the husbands did change. But it also made a difference in the households. Because I always tell the ladies, you're the heart of the home. We want the man to be the leader. And that's another struggle. But as a woman, I can't even touch that. I couldn't touch that. But I could be a, a force of encouragement through the word and through loving them in Christ's love to help them to know that there's hope. Not so much about what's going to change, but there's hope in Christ that in the midst mm. of the difficulties, there is hope. And that the next generation, their children will not uh, mirror what their dad was like or what they were like when they were angry and fought back or, or were you know, disrespectful. So it was, it was in, very important about the family. And then God showed me that they needed education to break that cycle of, of poverty. And the women were a little bit too beyond help. And, you know, it sounds kind of sad because they weren't old at the time. They might have been 30, but they looked like they were 40 or 50 or 60, some of them, because of the struggle they had. They had to walk to the river to get the water. They had to wash their clothes at a distance. And, uh, it, it was a hard life. And that showed in their appearance and in their attitude. Mm. But the idea was, what can, what can the ministry do to help them? And beyond the salvation was to help the children go to school. So that became a project. And <laughs> miraculously, the government came to me and asked me if I would do an adult education program in my, in my home in the garage, which I, at that time I didn't have a car. And that's where it started. And now, 20, almost 25 years later, mm. we have a certified nurse, we have electricians, we have young people who 
uh, uh, refrigeration and air conditioning repair, mechanics, teachers, and fine young people. That is the most important thing. They're not drunks like their dads were. The girls are not having, not some of them have, but the ones who finish school are not having babies out of wedlock because education does help you develop your mind to make better decisions. And to see them living a life that they might not have had if they hadn't heard the word and that God hadn't provided the funds for them to get educated. And the byproduct of that was the parents did change because they saw their children developing in a way that they couldn't afford to, to help them with. And their appearance actually changed where they might have been less responsible about how they looked. They started dressing better. They were cleaner. They kept their homes because that hope changed the atmosphere within their hearts and gave them hope that their children would have a better life. So that was a very important aspect of, of the ministry and still is. And now we have um, another crop of young people coming in because they, they, when they come to me, um, it's generally the, the scholarship started the seventh grade. So some of these kids, I, I've known them since they were infants, some of them, and now they're 23, 24, 25 years old. But now we have a new crop that's coming up. And um, tell the truth, it's a little bit harder. Why? Because they got <laughs> telephones. They got a TV. And the world is coming in, the culture. So I thank God for the workers that I have because I have now a young man who's 29 who's committed to the Lord. And he is sharing his story. And his story was his father left. Then he had a better opportunity that his mother could work. He wasn't poverty level, but he was still struggling without a dad. But his mother was able, she, she was educated and was able to take care of him and his other two siblings. He got an education, he's a teacher, he's a musician, but he was bereft of a dad. So he could actually communicate with the young people, especially the young men. You know, that Father God is your dad. And that you can accomplish something. He has a wife. They don't have children yet. And they, they represent something that most of our young people in this ministry have never seen. They've never seen. They see Mac and I, but we're old. And they can say, well, they're old. But to see a younger couple that's in the Lord and <laughs> prospering, not, not so much financially, but prospering in their marriage, in their life, and working for the Lord sharing the word of God, being there, that that blesses my, my, my soul because it really shows these young people a different picture, that there's a possibility that they can finish their education, get a good job, have a family, be loyal, be respectful of his wife, and not be in the street and, and take his money and just drink it away. So in that, that respect, I'm thankful for, you know, God giving me an opportunity to even see some of the things I've seen in the lives of these families and to continuously pray for them because it, it's all about the families. You may not be able to hit every area. Like, I can't hit the men, but I can pray with the women and, and encourage them. I can uh, solicit funds for the ministry to give scholarships to the, to the young people. I can provide a young young man who will come in and speaks their language that will encourage them in the word and be an example through not only his ministry to them in the word, but by his example as a husband to his wife. And that has been a blessing to see how God works because we sometimes have a plan, but if we don't adhere to God's plan, if we don't allow him to really be the, the author of the plan, you know, there's strategies. And you hear that. What is our strategy? What is the strategy? That can become so much in a box that you don't ask God, what is the heart of this ministry? What is it you want me to do? Because 
education was not in my in my mind or my heart but God showed that to me and it has been proven by the fruit that has developed within the ministry within these young people within the women and hopefully more and more within the families as a whole including the fathers amen yeah so um you you did pretty good Thank you me. did pretty pretty good i was i was getting uh a little concerned there for maybe she might uh go go way longer but she didn't so I'm, I'm excited uh, so I'm going to try to also do the same and not be too long winded but um, I think it's important that you guys know what we do now some of the things that I didn't hear her say so I'm going to say it for her um, is that as a missionary oftentimes we have to find uh, very unique ways to uh fundraise to come up with support because quite frankly and and we're not throwing any blame on any of you all but Myra and I marvel that I, I'm gonna give you actually I'm gonna give you a, a, a true live example because it happened with me so um, I'm always sharing both on my personal page and I also have ministry pages for things that I do and you know we're always trying to help communities and raise support and in some cases we're building things and all sorts of things are going on um, so I had a procedure not too long ago it wasn't a major procedure but it's it's actually was major to me because um, there were uh, some arteries that weren't allowing blood flow to certain areas of my body and I was having trouble with even just a little any uh, uh, nick or anything and I would have uh, wounds that would be around for months uh, so you know finally address that uh, and I know that I had over a hundred responses on Facebook. Now, I'm not, again, I'm not blaming you guys. I, I'm going to attribute that to the algorithms of Facebook that many of you all were given that particular message. But when <laughs> either myself or Myra or others are posting about things that are really in some cases life changing and life saving man we don't we don't get hardly anything like not even we're praying for you you know we don't we, and so it's always mesmerized me again i think it's the algorithm i'm going to attribute that to the algorithm but we have to go outside of social media often to raise funding now we didn't target this message today to just simply ask for your money uh, we really want to just tell you what it's like mm -hmm. to have to have things and people that you all might not know but we know very well and they're depending on support because they just don't have the resources or avenues to be able to take care of themselves and so you know I, I was saying all that to lead into Myra has started to proactively do some things so she is our resident artist she paints and uh, literally the the company that we had today bought one of her paintings mm -hmm. and that that the money from that went directly to the ministry how do i know that because i did it <laughs> so so um you know that's one of the ways but she also has um her books actually books available on amazon and um one of her books uh she just completed an audio version of it um, 
that, you know, wouldn't take very long to listen to the whole thing. You could probably do it like, can you do an, uh, within an hour? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, all those things are out there and people that purchase those things, 100% of whatever our profit goes right back into ministry. Same with me. Um, not so much with uh, doing the arts and things like this, but I have many opportunities to go out and speak. And people give honorariums. And I've never asked for one because I don't believe that you should be doing that because the gospel is truly God's word and you know we shouldn't really be getting paid for it. That's a whole nother conversation, <laughs> all right? But when people want to bless, I'm not going to turn them down. It's just not going to be for me personally. It's going to go into the ministry. You know, so do that. Uh, I'm always, I've got, I think right now I have five grant opportunities, actually seven grant opportunities that are out there as we speak right now, um, hoping that all or some will come to fruition because now I'm going to tell you what I do because I have six, oh that's right, I didn't do it right, six <laughs> locations that I actually uh, work with. And so I'm going to give them to you in rapid fire and briefly what's being done there. So I'll go with the um, the most local one to the United States, which is right here in Baltimore City. And in fact, I'm repping for it today. Uh, isn't that something? Repping for rap, right? Mm -hmm. I should hey, I should write that down. That's good. Yeah. So so you can see reaching all people. Now reaching all people was actually a ministry that was established by Tracy V. Price, who, by the way, her birthday is today. All right. And so Tracy brought the concept of reaching all people, or as we call it, rap, to Thirst No More. Uh, she didn't have it set up as a 501c3. And we said, hey, no, don't worry about it. So we brought her ministry into our organization uh, as basically an event, as a project. And every fourth Saturday of the month, we are out in Baltimore City around uh, North, uh, East North Avenue, and we are uh, worshiping God. We are, you know, giving out food. We are, you know, uh, giving out Bibles and um, water and toiletries and clothes and a small contingent of us actually hit the neighborhood and we are walking literally for Jesus and talking to our neighbors and we're going to set up a second one of those outreaches uh, in another part of Baltimore City in the coming months to just have more of an impact. And so um, that's what we do in Baltimore City. And of course, like everything else, that requires money too because we have to have uh, money for the food and and uh, some of the materials that we put out. We have to have a place to store them. And so there's a rental on that storage and all types of other miscellaneous expenses that come into play. And so, you know, and I'll tell you, the local uh, ministry is the hardest one for me to fundraise for when I'm doing it right for the people that are right here. Okay? And um, that's the hardest one for, for me to actually get resources for. But then in Rapid Fire, then in Kenya, we're working with orphan children. Uh, we have a long-term plan of creating an educational campus for street children and orphans. And uh, we have 24 that we work with now in partnership with uh, 
organization called Change Destiny Life Africa. And we're planning on expanding our reach to 3,000 street children. Uh, and we're hoping to do that within the next three to five years. All right. So then, uh, oh, and by the way, we plan on trying to fund that by way of affordable housing and by way of solar farming. And so those are things that we're putting in place now. But in order to even get that off the ground, we have to have starter money. So next one is in Nepal. Right now, we have a feeding program every month. At least uh, 8 to 12 families are being fed for a whole month uh, through the gifts of people that donate to that effort. And so uh, we have a bigger goal. And that bigger goal is to then take these families that we're working with, eventually going as much as 1,800 families in the regions of Chitwan, Kathmandu, and uh, I think it's Nalipur. I'm probably butchering it, but Nalipur. But those three areas specifically. And we're going to uh, start doing some goat breeding. Mm -hmm. And so these families can have their own goat or goats and start making money and you'd be surprised what they can get from goats, even the clothing, believe it or not, um, but milk and cheese and, and other things that will allow families to survive and also boost their economy. All right, so then in um, Rwanda, another big project like I talked about in Kenya, again, taking a village and totally revamping it into its own city within the, the, the bigger city of Kigali. But we have a small place that's called Bugacera, in which we're planning on developing. We see you, Lili. God bless you. All right. So um, these things will also come by way of affordable housing, solar farming, and potentially putting up a cell tower, maybe. All right. So again, but we need initial help to get that going. So then, uh, where am I? Oh, here we go. Uh, in Guatemala, because I can't leave out my, my home country. So in Guatemala, we have for like, I think the last six, seven years, mm -hmm. uh, have provided shoes for the children for, um, you know, for school. And uh, we've been doing that. Oh, this past year was the first time we did not reach our goal. Our goal is actually to support 150 children with uh, shoes that cost a, approximately $20 per child, give or take. And so last this last campaign was the first time, broke my heart that we couldn't take care of all the children. Nevertheless, uh, we found the ones who were in most need or most deserving, and we took care of them, and, and we still praise God that we were able to do that. And so um, I've already kick-started that effort uh, this year. And this year um, in Guatemala, we also were able to uh, deal with uh, water uh, purifiers for uh, I think it was like six or, six or seven women and their families. So we were excited about doing that. Um, then, oh, and we're still looking for a bigger opportunity in Guatemala. So stay tuned for that. Uh, then that leads me, where am I at? So then Pakistan. Pakistan, that's the last one, right? I think, yeah. I think, okay, so many going on in my head. Um, in Pakistan, that's a very, very recent one, and it's the one I want to talk about the most because it's so critical, like right now. So we started off supplying Bibles, and I want to thank, um, and I can say her name, um, uh, both uh, Mark Masterson and Elizabeth Rogers Masterson and their uh, church for um, helping us initially by providing Bibles in that region of Pakistan in Punjab to be exact uh, and the Bibles were in their own language um, but then we realized that they had a, a need 
because they were oftentimes meeting outside at night in the cold. And so we were able to uh, gather the resources with the help mm -hmm. of Upper Room Worship Center in Parkville, Maryland, uh, under the uh, leadership of Pastor Larry Thompson. And uh, th that whole congregation not only has blessed, they continue to bless even with other things outside of Pakistan. Uh, but with that, we were able to do a total uh, uh, overhaul of this building and turn it into a magnificent looking house of worship that also operates as a school. We're currently uh, now raising money to put in school supplies and things of that nature. But just a week and a half ago, actually, no, actually the whole solid week, last Sunday, I get this text from our contact there, and I won't mention his name, but I get this, this text and saying, brother, we're in trouble. The people of houses are being burned. People that believe in Christ, their houses are being burned. Brother, people are going without food. Brother, there's an angry mob of Muslims that are, are just uh, threatening lives, including his own, okay? And did actually take the lives of people within the community that I minister to personally every week, all right? And so <clears throat> the whole thing that happened behind this, and this is why we have to take missions very seriously, is because this all happened because a shoemaker in one of the provinces in Punjab uh, was accused of desecrating a Quran. And in that area of the world, that is blasphemy. And they were, the, the shoemaker and his father were almost beaten to loss of life. Mm -hmm. But the authorities came in and saved them. But, but there were at least 50 homes that got burnt. And we were concerned because the work and time that was put into the place that we just set up is a target. Mm -hmm. And so we've been praying with them and there were 20 families that were in need of food. We are doing our part to help those families. This is like an emergency uh, a project that I had to set up like literally days ago. And again, God is, he's so good, so good, so good. We are uh, like $55 away from achieving the goal that I set mm -hmm. already. Okay, so, um, you know, I'm bringing all this to the forefront. I know I took some time too. <laughs> but I'm, I'm bringing all these things to the forefront because Myra and I have personal relationships with people. These are not just random people. Mm -hmm. we, we, we eat with these folks. We worship with these folks. We labor with these folks. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we even take some heat from these folks. <laughs> but they mean so much to us. They are like family. And in some cases, I'm not going to lie to you, some of the people we know abroad treat us more like family and feel more like family to us than some of our own natural family because of Christ and because of this this whole need of fellowship. So we, we want to talk about those things uh, in the amount of time that we have because I don't want to be too long-winded with this. But, you know, it is so important that when you see something that comes from Myra saying, I need help, or you see something that comes from me, we need help. This is serious stuff. This is lives that are truly being affected, and we, we truly, truly appreciate those of you all that have been with us from the very beginning, and we're just hoping that others will understand that if you can't necessarily always be the one <clears throat> who's uh, going out, you can pray for those who do. You can help fund those who who need help. And then we're all doing everything together as the true church. 
as the body of believers. Ain't it amazing that that the one thing that Jesus encouraged the disciples to do, to go ye therefore, is the one thing that we really don't do? <laughs> Not the majority? You know, honestly. Because even in the little place of Chikimula where we live, there are very few that are actually doing missions. And so imagine if everybody were to take whatever assignment that God has given them and made sure that they were communicating the gospel to the nations, the ethnic groups, the cultures. Hmm. Imagine the explosion hmm. of truth and holiness that we could affect on our world. So I, I know I, I went long, <laughs> so I, I'm giving my own self. Bang. Uh, I am going to let her uh, share this uh, one thing right now because I, I know that she can talk to this particular issue. And that issue is this, Myra. I want you to tell our audience right now some of the personal sacrifices that you have made in order to do what you do. Hmm. <laughs> You've been asked that before, right? Oh, gosh. <laughs> the first thing that came into my mind was, was my parents. Living in another country um, when you have elderly parents is hard. And that's something every missionary can attest to because just about everyone I've known and know now have lost because we're getting older so our parents have gone on and that's the hardest thing uh, being in another country and not being able to um, be there you know I was blessed that I'm not the only uh, child so my sister my older sister were able mm -hmm. to be there for them but um, I thank God for the communications because in the last 10, 15 years, I've been able to call them. They don't, they didn't have a computer, but I was still able to call them. And, and even my mom would say sometimes she, we, she, they'd hear from me more than they heard from my other sisters who lived right around the corner, which is kind of sad because you, you kind of take it, you know, take people for granted. But I did not, and I don't think any of my fellow missionaries felt the same, you know, that they, you know, took their parents for granted. But there's the call on our lives, and it's not like we're abandoning them. It's we have to, you know, um, follow the Lord. I, I could tell the story quickly. Um, years ago, before I, I went full time, I went to China to smuggle in Bibles back in 1980. Something it was like 30 some years ago because my second grandson was in the oven, so it's how I can keep up with the time. And um, just about that time, my mother found out that she had, uh, she needed a triple bypass. She needed heart surgery. I had bought the tickets and I was scheduled to leave before the surgery. And I felt the Lord speak to me and say, Myra, you're going. And I was like, I can't do that. I can't, I can't leave him. And I, I went over to visit and uh, my father and his way said that's right go ahead and go and let people talk about you because you abandoned your family <laughs> and I was like oh god and my mother her sweet self said let her go let her go because she's not going on vacation she's going to serve the Lord and that was God I mm. mean those kind of mm. miracle moments just help us to know that we're not being selfish, we're we're being selfless because it hurts us just as much. And I, I Mac went through the same thing with his mom. When my mom passed, I wasn't able to get home before she passed. I got home; they were working. We were working on the funeral. I never saw her, but I I talked to her, and that blessed me. My dad, right right around the time I got to know Mac. My dad was in hospice and Mac was visiting him. 
And I was able to get home the day he died. My daughter picked me up from the airport. We went directly to the hospice. And I said, Daddy, I'm here. And he took a breath and he looked at me, took a breath. And a few minutes later, took another breath and was gone. And that, you know, that was a blessing. So that's a, that's the greatest sacrifice I can see. I just have just listening to, you know, face, watching Facebook and a fellow missionary lost her dad within the last six months and just the last week had to go back home because she lost her brother. That is something we all deal with. That's the hardest being separated from our yeah. families, yeah. especially our parents. Yeah, well, you know, there you go. This is the one this is the one place where uh, our answers are definitely the same. So, um Hey Junior, I see you. All right, Junior's watching. Um but um Oh, wow, Mara, you just messed me up. So, <laughs> so <laughs> 2 years ago we were doing exactly what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. We were here on Facebook doing a live and I got right after we finished I, I was getting ready to jump onto another meeting uh, a zoom meeting that I had set up and I got this the call about my mom and you guys have to know that my father died in 2015 and I just happened to be grounded. So I was, you know, right with him, mm -hmm. although he decided to actually leave this earth without me seeing him die, which I think that somehow God mm -hmm. orchestrated that. So I would not see that. Um, but it's still something that hurt me, but I was, I was, I was home. So, you know, um, I was able to be there immediately for my mother. Okay. And, but then after that, I became literally the husband man for my mother. You were immediately there for your father. Yeah. But, but I'm saying, but, then yeah. but then after he passed, I, I became the husband man right. for, for her. And it actually took both of us on this mm. journey. <laughs> yes. Oh gosh! And I, I mean, uh, what can I say about my mom? Uh, let's just say this: we got to know each other, and, I, and, and probably me. I got to just uh, realize that she is who she is. And it was okay. It was okay. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Um, but then, right around the time I just met Myra, mm -hmm. and Myra had had an opportunity to meet my mother, yeah. and then in my world, the next plan would be that uh, Myra would be my wife, because this is before we got married, you know, that, you know, like any other son, you want to have your family at the wedding. You want to have your mom mm -hmm. at your wedding. All right. And, uh, but what happened just prior to all of that is that my mom, uh, went through and I can talk about it. So, uh, definitely she had dementia. Okay. And in fact, uh, on somehow on the, the, on my mother's side of the family, for women, it seems to be very prevalent. Um, but my mom, like literally, uh, we, we determined that uh, she had gotten pneumonia because she started getting this really hoarse cough, dry cough, mm -hmm. right? And um, at first we were just treating like a cold and then it just wouldn't go away. And so, you know, my mother 
was a tiny woman anyway. So, so we would, we would uh, get her to the hospital and we found out that she had pneumonia. And then we found out that pneumonia can be a triggering agent for, uh, you know, dementia. And so Myra had met my mother, my crazy mother, fun-loving mother. I, I could say my wacky mother because <laughs> she's crazy in a good way. All right. But when Myra came back, mm. the woman who she had met, full of life, vibrant, yeah. was a shell of herself. Yeah. And it was very difficult. Now, I'm, I'm just setting you guys up, so I won't go through all the details. But number one, it made it impossible for her to be at our wedding. Uh, she could not have handled all those people. Could not. Not at the state she was at then. Mm -hmm. And then when we got her to a place of comfort and serenity, <clears throat> things were going really good. I, I started back traveling and everything uh, for ministry. And we had a system in place that um, there were a few times I had to come back home to deal with mom and that was perfectly okay I was always prepared for that but when we were sharing two years ago on Facebook live in Guatemala in Guatemala okay and mm -hmm. first phone call I get your mom stopped breathing mm -hmm. next call I get ah she's 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 breathing again Next call I get, she's not breathing, and this time we feel it's final. And it was. And I am a gazillion miles away. <laughs> and that one, to have to have my children have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And of course, I would have dealt with it to have to call my mother's sister mm. and not be in the in the room with her. What Myra's saying, what I'm saying is that for us, we could talk about the challenges of travel. We could talk about the challenges of governments and, and systems and all kind of hardships. And we have dealt with all of that. But Missing out on those two things are at the forefront of things that have hurt us deeply. And it doesn't go away. And, and honestly, it's never left me. It hurts me that I wasn't there to watch my mom take her final breath. It, it it just it's just more than I I can even say in words, and so when we talk, we you know I was joking earlier. Uh, we, we sing this song, you know, we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Well, people that are in missions, and again, we talk about it globally. But people who dedicate their lives to the, the, the work of Jesus Christ, even locally, mm -hmm. we can tell you right now, without again mentioning names, we, we have family here that just feels like they've been abandoned by us, and we can't change how a person feels, but what do you do when you've been given a call to go? You got to go. You got, you've got to go. And so um, how, how we, we reconcile that is just knowing that God's plan is superior. And we love our families, our natural families to the best of our abilities. But, you know, um, the way we see it, this the world is you know or at least the believers in this world are all part of God's family 
and they too are our brothers and sisters. Hey, speaking of a missionary, I got Kristen Crisp on, and she is also with us in Guatemala doing the work of the Lord. Um, and so even Kristen could relate to what we're talking she, about now. She lost her mom. She lost her mom. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, missed events, people that get sick, having to go back and forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. we, we have so many people we talk to all the time. They have to go back and deal with, with family issues and family situations. Um, and, uh, you know, we do this at our own expense. <laughs> you know, so... Um, uh, you know, again, this is not a, a pity party. This is just being real and, and, and honest. You know, it's the price you pay. It is the price. It is the price. And and Christ said that you know, to follow Him, we must pick up our cross, and and this is part of our cross, and we must deny self. And if you notice, none of these things are anything to do about anything that is personal for us. Is Everything is an ex extension of giving to others. Mm -hmm. I can't, gosh, I can't <laughs> tell you the last time we actually just spoiled ourselves to the point just for us. It, really, just for us. And I'm not talking about going out to dinner. I'm talking about just saying, you know what? We're just going to drop everything and we're just going to do something for us. Uh. I can't tell you if we've ever done that. All right? So, you know, that's the price, and, and and we're good with that. We're we're good with that. Mm -hmm. This is the life that we have uh, decided to he, to live. He has given his consolation that no one else can give like he does. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, as we start to kind of wrap this up, um. We just ask that you guys, because nobody gave us any... Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. I, Kristen, I'm going to read this because Myra hinted to it, but I want to read your comment. Uh, this is Kristen. Kristen uh, is married to a young man by the name of Julian, and he is a, he's a brother from another mother across the pond, as we say, because he's British. Um, but this is what Kristen says. She says, I lost my sister unexpectedly a year later. Missions isn't for the faint of heart, but you have to continue to listen to God first. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's it. We, we know of missionaries that uh, en route to take care of family issues have had health issues of their own. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I won't throw out their names unless they come on here. But, you know, this is the the reality of things. Hey, Sheila, or in our world, favorite sister. All right. Um, but but these are the sacrifices uh, in order to be able to do the work of ministry. And, and what I was getting ready to say, but even before I ever left, the United States for God purposes. I was having the same kind of issues in the ministry I was doing right on the street. Now we got look at this. Now Julian is here, the the Mister Crisp. Okay, and and so again, um, you know, I'm glad that they popped on because these are folk that. Every day, this is all they do. They don't have a job, not not a, a career, not anymore. You know, they have packed up the bags and, you know, gone on to go to a country that's not their native country and to do work with people that, uh, you know, for a minute, even had language barriers involved with it. But, but God has... One that was born in Baltimore, or at least in Maryland, and one who was born in D.C., that would be me, all right? Two guys just said, we're going to do something about this, and we're going to do it God's way, and we're going to create this thing, and we're going to be able to minister to people. We're going to be able to support people, feed people, clothe people, and encourage people, witness to people, and prayerfully allow God to save people. And we're going to do this. 
And man, we we did that 17 years ago. And the people, the people right in our uh, congregations could not fathom why we had to go somewhere else in order to do God's work when there, you know the story, there are people right here that need help. But what nobody ever considered with myself and with Paul, we were already doing things to help people here. It was an extension to go other places. It, we didn't quit. We're just doing even more. Mara didn't quit uh, our mystery in, in the U.S. It was just an extension. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, our, our beloved couple, the Chris, they didn't just leave their sp uh, prospective countries because, again, she's U.S., he's Britain. But they didn't leave them, abandon them. Mm -hmm. They just extended their reach and not even their reach, honestly, God's reach through them to other places so that the gospel message could be shared with mm -hmm. others. How selfish is it that you want to keep people grounded somewhere for your benefit when God has called them somewhere else? But only the only true believers can even understand that statement. So um, not to get on, uh, you know, any kind of negative uh, rant rant here, but but ultimately, what we're saying is that uh, between Myra and ourselves, we have been able to experience situations and people, and we have so many stories. We could we could have dedicated <laughs> <clears throat> dedicated this whole hour to just stories. You know, but, um, you know, uh, look at it. That's my brother, man. That Ju Julian, I'm preaching, man, just for you. <laughs> look, here's, what, uh, here's what, what Kristen is saying. She says, amen. God calls us to where he wants us, not where we want to go. We still work here when we come home, and that means where, where they, they previously lived, with, you know, you They're get in it. Texas now. They're in Texas, right, Texas, thank you. In Texas now, and went to a homeless church this morning to serve. Uh, but hold up. But the calling at the time was to our lovely but blazing hot <laughs> Guatemala. Yeah, we're getting ready to come. Guys, we're coming back. Tuesday, Tuesday. Um, so y'all need to get these temperatures lower because I don't like heat. All right, mm. and I'll tell you guys, you want to talk about paying the price? <laughs> these guys have been suffering with temperatures that have gotten as high as 112 degrees. 118. Oh, 118. Sorry, let's not slight them. Mm. Six more degrees hotter, and believe me, every degree higher, it you feel it. Mm. All right, so so that's the sacrifice. That is made, and um, we appreciate them. Uh, I'll call out some names. We appreciate um, uh, Marla, Marla and, and Larry, Larry Nancy. Nancy, and uh, who else? Daniel uh, and, and um, his wife. I forget. I lost the name. Gosh, I can't. Yeah. Um, but Daniel anyway, Daniel and Brandy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and let's not forget the Copes. Oh, and the Smiths. And the Smiths, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So so we have families right where we are who can relate to exactly what we're talking about. And so I think that this is a good point where I just want to take a minute, Myra. I'll, I'll let you have final say. But um, I just want to let you know what's going on with the two of us very quickly. So, you know, we just celebrated in March our seventh year anniversary. So now we are in the year of new beginnings. Since y'all like to talk about these years, 
So it truly is a new beginning for us, we, we feel. And it's a new beginning for our ministry. Okay, because, you know, it wasn't like when I went to Guatemala years ago that Myra was just twiddling her thumbs waiting for her knight in shining armor to come <laughs> and rescue her. Uh, she was already busy uh, doing the work of ministry. That was one of the things that attracted me to her. Um, you know, I'm, I've always said this is like, man, there's nothing I have to do here. This woman's already working. So <laughs> she would understand that I'm about my father's business as well. So anyway, cut to the chase is that um, she already had a, a ministry established. That ministry was under the call letters of WMOTW, which stands for Watchmen on the Walls Ministries LTD. Mm -hmm. And that was the U.S. ministry that was birthed uh, through my wife to support uh, her uh, efforts in Chiquimula, Guatemala. Well, uh, she also, in Guatemala, uh, for the past couple of years, has been putting together uh, a true nonprofit that's specific for Guatemala. And that is under, uh, we call it MCYEP or M C Y E P. You say it because I butcher it all the time. Ministerio Comodo y Educación de Paz Chiquimula. There you go. Okay, and under MCYEP, MCYEP uh, serves specifically in Chiquimula, Guatemala, and she has a you know, board of directors and setups very similar to a, a U.S. nonprofit. Well, I, of course, bring Thirst No More Corporation into our relationship. So we've been, for the last seven plus years, we've been operating as two separate entities as far as ministry is concerned. Okay, united as a couple, but these two things and all of a sudden this past January and I got to give Myra credit for this because she's the one that had the uh, initial epiphany it's like well Matt why don't I just put my ministry under you and it's like uh, duh yeah why not right because it would uh, make things a lot easier take a little bit off of her although she tries to add more stuff to it <laughs> but um, but ultimately we can then present ourselves as a united front and we can now confidently say this is what's going on with us okay WMOTW in the United States really does not exist any longer it's in process. Okay, well, it's in process, but in but our this, minds... This will be the last year. Yeah, okay. Uh, and, and really, we're not even directing anybody to go there anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, because her Guatemalan organization, MCYEP, is the one that now, uh, similar to Reaching All People, is now coming under the Thirst No More Corporation umbrella, meaning that wherever we go, we're going to be under the Thirst No More umbrella, but uh, MCYEP will continue to operate in Guatemala uh, in whatever fashion Myra sees fit as the executive director for that, uh, but um, in the U.S., for people who want to support MCYEP, M-C-Y-E-P, they'll go through Thirst No More, reference M-C-Y-E-P, and we will just operate finally as one when we present and go out. We'll be one in, in both marriage and in ministry, and we're so excited to do that, and we're still working out some of the rough edges, but... But in theory and in uh, uh, actual functionality, it's already happened. Yes. yes. And, and for you guys that are online, all you have to do is just look in the pinned comment that I put 
earlier out there to show if you want to support, however you want to support, please do so the way that I've laid it out for you. And we would really appreciate that. That is not us saying you got to do it. It's saying that if you feel led to do it, God is leading you to do it. Please, please, please don't go to other organizations and you have no idea where your money's going. You have no idea who's benefiting. Most of the time, I'm just going to be honest with you. Most of these major ones, most of your money is going to pay salaries and take care of all kinds of things. And the projects get very little. I'm just telling you the truth. We don't get a salary. And we don't take salaries. So there you go. Um, and if you want to find out what we're doing with contributions, we put it in our newsletters. And you can call us up and we'll tell you uh, exactly what's going on. So, um, again, we thank you guys. And again, I'm going to give Myra opportunity to chime in one more time but we want to just thank you guys for putting up with us for what has now been oh my gosh yeah an hour and 21 minutes we do have to wrap it up because we actually got another guest coming <laughs> <laughs> so so Myra you take the floor I thank you for the opportunity to share some of the things that we're doing but it's more that God is doing it's it's very important especially in these days that people hear no matter where we are, if we are in in your own country, to you know your neighbor, your the person around the corner, the person in the store, you know, or somewhere even when you travel, that there's always an opportunity to show forth the love of Christ. And sometimes you don't even have to you know t talk about being a Christian; you just have a conversation. And then, if that's you know God's leading, they'll want to know they'll start asking questions and it gives you an opportunity to, to answer in a way that they will know that you're a Christian. There's something different about us. We don't have to throw scriptures at people because they don't understand it. But we can show forth the love of Christ that will draw them, that they will want to know what it is about you. What it is, what, where's your joy come from? Where's your confidence, your humility, your work ethic, your... your the, the joy of the Lord that, that is your strength in the midst of the, the struggles that you might go through. That's really showing forth that, you know, they will know that we are Christians by our love. Not the kind of love that says, oh, it's okay. No, the kind of love says, God has something better for you. That you can change. That you can do the things that please God. It's possible because of his power through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We're so happy that God allows us to be together as a couple because by doing this, it actually keeps us connected. It keeps us talking about, you know, things. And so we love you guys. God bless you and God keep you in his perfect peace with all of our minds stayed on Jesus. God bless you. Good night. Bye.